Hey guys, hope you are all doing really well from wherever that may be. Um, just jumping on here this morning just to share a bit of an encouragement. Um, you know, just because we can't gather together like we normally do doesn't mean that we're not still family. Doesn't mean that we can't still journey together. Um, and you know, we are in strange times, we are in unsettling times and you know, sometimes we don't really know what to do with ourselves. But I just wanted to just come on here today just to encourage you and just remind you that you know, God sort of uses every situation and there is a reason we're in this situation right now and it's just going to be really encouraging you to really press into your relationship with God over these next few weeks, you know, however long that may be that we're in this lockdown for, however long it may be till we see each other again, but just using that time that we have to really just come deeper into the presence of God. Um, and what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is hopefully going to just give you a bit of encouragement, a bit of advice on how we do that and what that looks like. Um, so it's going to be based on scripture, we're going to be looking at Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Um, before we do that, I'm just going to pray. Um, it'd be great if you guys would pray with me. Um, but yeah, Jesus Father, we just, we thank you that even in these times where we can't see each other, that, that there are ways that we can still connect with each other, Father. Ways that we can still read the words together, Father, and, and just deepen our relationship with you as a family, Father. And I just pray today, Father, that even though we're not physically together, Father, that you unite our hearts, Jesus. And that as we read the passage today, Father, that, that you will teach us things, Jesus, that we can take with us into these next few weeks. I pray for good health for everybody, Jesus, and I pray that that, they, that the youth can really use this time to just press into their relationship with you. So thank you, Father. We love you. Amen. Okay, so we're going to look at Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Um, now, I'm going to read it from the message version. Normally, I use ESV or NIV, but when looking at this passage, um, the message version just really stood out to me, just for some of the ways that they phrase things. You know, it's quite it's quite current, it's quite modern, it's quite relevant, but um, they also just put things sometimes into a different perspective. Um, so, yeah, so Matthew 6, 25 to 34. It says, if you decide for God, living a life of God worship, it follows that you don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtimes or whether the clothes in your closet are in fashion. There is far more to your life than the food you put in your stomach, more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, carelessness, careless in the care of God. And you count far more to him than the birds. Has anyone by fussing in front of the mirror ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? All this time and money wasted on fashion. Do you think it makes that much difference? Instead of looking at the fashions, walk out into the fields and look at the wildflowers. They never primp or shop, but have you ever seen colour and design quite like it? The ten best dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside them. If God gives such attention to the appearances of wildflowers, most of which are never seen, don't you think he'll attend to you, take pride in you, do his best for you? What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting, so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things, but you know both God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out, you'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. It's Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Yeah, so great passage, um, loads of things that we could look at, but we're just going to have a look at sort of two kind of main things that I've, I thought really stood out to me when I was reading this. Um, so the first bit was, um, it's all based on scripture, but the first sort of part that really stood out to me was the bit where it says, you count far more to him than the birds. Um, I think for me, I read this and I immediately was reminded of Genesis 1, where it says, so God created man in his own image. Um, and everyone knows the creation story, um, you know, God spent so much time really designing and planning, planning the world. Um, everything that we see, God has designed to a T. Um, but here, God, we were created in his own image. And I thought that, like this was so powerful because, you know, this passage talks a lot about, you know, things like the wildflowers, things like the birds and how God really cares for them. But we mean so much more to God than, than they do because we are his children. We're not just his creation, we are his children. And God wants to look after us. Like, God takes such joy in what he creates. 
Um, and if God provides for his creations, then why would he not provide for us? Um, and for me, this was just a massive reminder that in this time, we shouldn't be foolish and we shouldn't worry about, about what tomorrow is going to look like. Because when we start to worry, this is when we start to become dissatisfied and discontent with what we have. And we start to pick out like, well, why don't I have this? Why can't I do this? Why can't I get access to this? And we can't let our hearts get to that place. So we have to remind ourselves that like, God loves us so much, like more than anything else he has ever created. And if he provides for the birds, if he provides for the flowers, why would he not provide for us? So we just have to remind ourselves not to worry about what tomorrow's gonna look like, not to fret, not to be anxious, because like God's will will be done. Um, you know, in Philippians 4, 19, it says, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. God knows what we need. We don't need to ask him. You know, God knows before we come to him exactly what we're going to say. He just wants us to talk to him, but he knows what we need. So if he knows what we need, why would he not provide for us? So we don't need to worry about, you know, provisions that God is going to give us because, you know, everything God does is according to his will and his will will be done. So, like, one of my biggest pieces of advice to you is in this moment where things can be so unknown and sometimes quite unsettling, like, put your trust in God, put your, cast all your worries and your anxiousness upon him and everything will be okay. Um, you know, scripture tells us that God, God will provide for us. Scripture tells us that God will look after us. Um, so we just need to trust in him. Um, and, like, a lot going on inside this, it also says in this passage to not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. And like going along with that worry like an anxiousness about that we're not going to have what we need. Like sometimes God is already giving us what we need, but we're so focused on like these exact things. We're so focused on well, God's not giving me this, God's not giving me that, that we don't really take time to step back and look at well, what has God given me. And like, you know, a task that I'm going to set you guys is over these next like couple of days is to take time in your prayers not to be so wrapped up in the asking but so wrapped up in the just giving thanks for what God has given you and I think you guys will come out of it so surprised in all that God has given you because he gives to us every day and he gives like in multitude we just sometimes get so caught up in our earthly desires that we don't take time to to really look at this um yeah so that's so that's kind of the first bit um the second bit was this bit where it says, steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Now, in most translations of this passage, this is verse 33, and it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which we all know um, is a super famous verse. But I really liked the way that the message put this. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. And I thought it was interesting because, you know, it's written in this order for a reason. And I think if we look at it, it starts with God reality. And before focusing on anything else, we have to consume ourselves with God. You know, we wake up in the morning and the first thing we do is we pray, we listen to worship, we listen to worship music. The last thing we do before we go to bed is we pray, we watch a sermon, we talk to God. And when we're consuming ourselves in God and, and just the reality of him, this is when we then see God initiative, which, is, which comes next in the scripture. When we see the reality of God, we understand that his provisions come from his initiative, which is... God wants to provide for us and God wants to look after us because he loves us. You know, God is love himself and everything he does comes out of this place. So he will not leave us to hang dry. You know, God, God's will will be done. And if tomorrow we wake up and things m most likely will not be as we are expecting because we don't know the will of God and we can never understand why he does things. Um, but he does everything from a place of love. And that's what we have to remind ourselves. Isaiah 54 10 says though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken nor my covenant of peace be removed says the Lord who has compassion on you there is nothing that this world could throw at God you know that will shake how much he loves us you know this this world is full of so much sin this virus is is a product of that but God will use everything for good you know he makes all things good that's just who god is because he is he is love he is compassion he is mercy he is salvation he is grace and like when we remind ourselves about that 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 fills us with such an inner peace like we don't have to worry about tomorrow because god's got it um 
Philippians 4, 10 to 13, um, it talks about how we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Um, you know, and when it says when we fix our eyes on Jesus, we can learn to be in content with whatever, whatever th is thrown at us in the midst of anything. When Christ becomes our everything, we are content with all things that we are given. Um, so yeah, so today I just wanted to leave you guys and I think the last little bit of this Matthew um, chapter 6 verse 25 to 34 really sums up this whole message that says give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes you know God is using this right now and we don't want to miss out on the incredible things that God is going to do the incredible lives God is going to touch the incredible salvation that's going to come from this because we're worked up on are we going to have enough food in the dinner table tomorrow have I got enough time like am I going to be able to go out for a walk tomorrow can I when am I next going to see my friends like yes those are things that that like we have in our lives but we shouldn't worry about them like because otherwise we're going to miss out on the incredible things that God is doing and like we don't need to worry because God loves us and he's got us and it's from this place that we need to go forth. It's from this place that we need to love our families. We need to respect our parents. We need to preach the gospel to all who we can because there are people who, who don't know God in this time and who are going to be worried. But we have this incredible opportunity to share with us the peace that we, that we know because we know God. And it's from this foundational strength that we have to press in, we have to go forward. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's what I really encourage you guys to think about over the next few days is why are you worrying when we have this all-consuming, all-loving God on our side? Um, so yeah, um, I'm just going to pray for you guys just to just to end this. Um, and then, you know, I'd love to to hear from you guys, maybe post on the page about the, or some of the amazing things that God, God is, is giving you or some of the amazing things that you're managing to do from this foundational strength. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to pray. Hmm, so Jesus... We just thank you that you love us. We thank you that you love us with everything that you are. We thank you that you took time in creating us, Father, and that we are created in the exact way that you designed us to be. And Father, I just ask that over these next few weeks, Father, as time is unsettling and worries and anxieties may be, may be brewing in the minds of people, Jesus, that, that when that happens, Father, you bring us back to the foundation that is you. You remind us that you've got us and you love us. And that from this place, Father, we emerge stronger in our faith with you, stronger in our relationship with you, stronger in our ability to share people, share with people about you. So I just pray that over the next few days, Father, that the youth really, really see your love for them and that they are filled with such an inner peace, Father. We are so excited to see what you're going to do, Father, and we are so thankful that we get to be even a small part in that. We thank you, Jesus, and we love you. In your name we pray, amen. So yeah, it's been great to connect with you guys. Um, hopefully we'll be seeing you guys soon. Um, I have no idea when that'll be, but um, we're praying for you. We love you. Um, and yeah, just stay connected. See you guys later.